Hello and welcome to the Echo Chamber podcast. My name is Tony Groves and today we're in the presence of a genuine journalist as opposed to these tinfoil hat conspiracy hosts. <laughs> as always, I'm joined by my co-host and newly appointed head of the Construction Industry Federation, Martin McMahon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Congratulations. Uh, more importantly, we're delighted to be joined in the Tortoise Shack by journalist, reporter and presenter with News Talk, member of the TV3 rotating panel, uh, Twitter sensation and Ireland's biggest New York Knicks fan, Richard Chambers. And he actually actually went and wore the Knicks hoodie in just, just to rub it in my face. Yeah. Richard, thanks so much for coming over. Thanks for having me, guys. It's, I've been waiting for this for, for quite some time. Never thought it would happen. Never oh, thought it would no, happen. No, no, no. He kept saying to me, that, well, this, this is the guy we have to get on. I said, far ahead. Uh, uh, Richard, uh, there's only one place to start. You were the actual, uh, you were the canary in the coal mine yesterday. You got to stand in the RDS and and, and, and watch the IR exit uh, meeting as, as it How went down. How do you down. pronounce that, actually? There was a bit of a debate about yeah, this. Yeah, I think it's our exit I think it's our exit and I was chatting out actually one suggestion I mean because he had all these other ideas because like this is a bit derivative should we call it air a mock or whatever <laughs> and um, one of my friends Siobhan Brett who's a journalist based in New York now um, she sent me the suggestion when she heard that there was this meeting in the first place she's like can we call it Exit I X I I T because it's something she could imagine Enda Kenny saying. So, uh, I was like, that's, that sounds like a better suggestion. It's a reasonable question. Okay. Or somebody from the floor asked. But even even I R X it just sounds ire, doesn't it? it just yeah. sounds angry, and it's kind of in keeping with. Or I wrecked it, you know. Oh, no. <laughs> um, you were you were there yesterday. I, I want to start with, with first of all the John Waters speech, and I, I said this downstairs. It seemed to me that was the speech he wanted to give 10 years ago, but now he just felt confident enough to go there, to actually... There was a lot of othering. There was... Uh, Newsworthy on, on Twitter put up a lot of clips. I know you took videos as well, but there was a lot of they, this, they, that, um, they, they are, them. And it was it was just the othering of, of, of anybody who wasn't, uh, in his eyes, an Irish person. Yeah. Um, it, was, it was a remarkable speech, and it is something... I think I said it to the guys in the hall yesterday, some of my colleagues, I was like, I don't think I've ever seen a, a, a sort of a political speech like that in Ireland because of what you're talking about there. This, you know, the idea of nativism and, and, and I mean, nativism is, is 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 kind of like I think he, he said it himself a few times. There was this idea that we are a European people, we're a, a Christian people, and that the European Union, which he described as a metastatic cancer, which is tearing That's away right. at That's our true. Christianity, and I just thought that this is. It, it seemed to me to be a speech which probably wouldn't have been out of place in like 50s or 60s United I'd Kingdom. Go, I'd go earlier. I mean, you, you, you can argue about it, but it was a really remarkable speech. I think, I mean, all of these lines and people were, were, were picking out quotes from us, stuff like, you know, the, the three main pillars of society being family, church and nation, people drawing some historical, mm. you know, parallels to that. But... It was, I mean, the, the biggest reaction he actually had from it as well, well, apart from the bit where we'll, we'll talk about the immigrants bit in a minute, but he just tore into the media and that was the thing which kicked everything else off. And I think that was about midway through the speech. And after that, it just went, it was it was a bit of a barnstormer. Like his energy went up, mm. he got into it, the crowd got into it, and it just, yeah, the immigrants thing. What what type of numbers are we talking in the crowd? Here? There was, I mean, that's, uh, it's, 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 it is the question that, you know, these days whenever you have protests be generous be generous I was I, I think there was there was at least 400 people okay. that we got down we, we did a really good crunch of estimate because as you know yourself if you're ever whenever you see the RT news will have the number of people who are attending any rally or any I, protest I do believe I had words with somebody from RT about that <laughs> on a protest day I, I, do, I don't doubt it I think everybody's had a dig at some point about whoever how many people attend the protest so we, we try to get things right okay? and I think it was it was at least 400 the numbers actually dropped down after Nigel Farage left like he did his he did a speech and then he did a sit down with John Waters yeah. and then the numbers sort of Ranged out at that, at that point, but just to go back to the, to the speech, just the way he was talking about the idea of immigration in Europe um, was it was it was quite remarkable. Um, I think the sort of standout or the big sort of the, the high point of that speech was when he was talking about you know how immigrants to places like the United Kingdom, the Netherlands, France, and Germany 
um, were there for purely for economic reasons and they had no affinity no allegiance uh, and to because we allow them to be that way that was it, it? it's like we, 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 we are at fault for that because we don't demand it yes. we don't demand this allegiance this affinity and it was you know serious that one that one went down really really well yeah, with that I, crowd I heard people shout back uh, spot on and, yeah, and, spot on here 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 that sort of thing I mean it was that was something that a, a well, lot of people in that crowd it did make the hair stand up on the back of my neck but not in that sense mm. it really did I I, I you know, I couldn't help but have echoes of Powell and, you know, like those echoes are there and they're coming through really, really clearly. Um, I thought it was a frightening speech. Mm. I thought it was a very frightening but speech and I'm hoping you know what's more that scary? it doesn't go to everybody. You know what's more scary? It's the fact that, like, even Rory Heron was right to point it out as, as he did. He said, he said we can we can look at it and we can have a, we can point and, and, and laugh but if, if liberals, if you want to call yourself a liberal and you and you laugh at these people, that's where you get uh, Trump. That's where you get Brexit. That's where you get hardening of yeah. the positions. There, 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 that is an important point to make, and it is something from covering Brexit, from covering Trump, and then you see it happening over here as well. Is that you know people are very quick to just think to, to write off things as a joke. Mm-hmm. Um, that this is a joke gathering, a sham gathering, is how Neil Richmond, the Fine Gael, um, senator, described this beforehand. Um, um, for different reasons, basically said that you know Nigel Farage's video had all these fake facts in it. Yeah. But the, the people are very quick to write things off as a joke, or to just have a go and just say, just describe things as you know fascist or whatever like that. And you know what? I, I, if people want to call each other fascist, that's up to them. I mean, it's not a word that should be bandied around too casually. I mean, it's very very serious connotations to that. But the fact of the matter is that when you use those terms or you write things off as a joke, people who aren't even involved in that discussion they mightn't so people who have no affinity to Trump or to Brexit or to IREX or mm-hmm. whatever else they don't like that no. if you're not a member of that sort of you know that liberal you know I don't know but I don't want to use the yeah, echo, like e- echo chamber or a bubble exactly echo chamber we'll get the brand in there <laughs> but um, like if you're a part of that if you're not a part of that where you're throwing out the word fascist or, or like Nazi or whatever else or quizzling which is another word we'll probably get around to in a little bit that, yeah. um, you know that puts people off because it doesn't seem like you're engaging with the substance of the debate and I think that's that's something that people have to be mindful of here obviously our regs if you look at the opinion polls there's a very very small number of people who actually as part of our society who actually believe that it's a good thing mm-hmm. somewhere between 10 and 15 20% of an absolute stretch but you know these things can take off. Mm. These things can very, very, very quickly well, take off. Uh, also, like being a devout lefty, which I am, yeah. I have big issues with mm. the big, big issues with the EU. And then, would we be better off in? Would we be better? Yeah, I can, I can countenance, but that, not on a level of migrants are destroying the the EU. Not on that level. It's purely on an economic level. Do we want to be going down this neoliberal route, or do we want to be going a, a more socialist route? Yeah. That's my and. Th- 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 that is something. I mean, that is something that you know has almost been lost in a way in talking about our exit because we're all quick to like to say, right, these group are absolute loonies and yeah. whatever about this, and we have to stay in. And Brexit is a disaster; it's a mess. La la la. But if you talk about the substance of what the European Union is about, there are some very, very genuine concerns and problems. Fisheries is one which came up repeatedly now yesterday, and there is some, you know, there is some lie. There is a lot of lying which goes on about fisheries. But there are you have to talk from. I know plenty of people involved in fishing, whether in Killybeg, Killybeg, up in Donegal or Castletown Bear down in Cork. And they hate what the European Union has done to fishing because, you know, they see, you know, quotas for all of these other boats, whether they're coming from the UK or they're coming from France or Spain or whatever, fishing in our waters. They have more quotas and all that sort of crack. But there's benefits to that as well, to European membership as well. But, like, you have to engage on the fact that there are issues with the European Union. Well, it's really serious this, ones. this, for me, is, is my bigger problem. I see that Brexit has become the talking point for what I would call those people that don't have a home in mainstream politics mm. because they are too far out there. So Brexit has become the talking point, but do they? Do, is Brexit really something they believe in? No, I don't think so. I think they're just using it, same as they're using um, pro-life, same as they're using libertarianism. They are using these things to get this message across, this anti-migrant, this enemy at the gates message. And Brexit is just the latest tag that they can add into this. Mm. But you but look at the crowd that's, that's, that's there. But that's making it smaller because in the reality 
you can look at let's look at Trump's uh, uh, popularity ratings right he's bouncing around 33% or whatever it is and yet it was when he when the question was put during the campaign who did the people trust more Hillary or Trump 86% of people trusted Trump more purely on the basis that what he said he believed it whether he believed it was, it was true or not he came across as, as genuine now truthiness is the word for that yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But, but, but we talk about truthiness but, we, but in these ideas Martin you don't need to be pro-Brexit to, to think that we need to look after our own you don't need to be pro-Brexit to, to think that um, oh we can't sort our housing uh, issue without um, stopping people coming in so these ideas, they don't need to be, you don't need to be net naturally a, a libertarian, a pro-lifer. You can actually be, a, like, that we have MEPs who are in Europe right now who are opposed to the EU. That's right. So the good MEPs who are yeah. opposed to the EU. So, so, so we, have to we have to take this on a wider, on a wider conversation because if we don't, we'll sleepwalk into, into trouble where you'll find out that, that they'll, end, they'll arrive with a, a, um, a political um, representation. And if it is 10, 15%, mm. and we're dealing in new politics, and we're dealing in... in, yeah, in, it's, in, enough. in it's enough to make yeah. a difference. So it needs to be, it needs to be actually, we need to face the truth. We have Lark and Sora here said, "If you never, if you don't face where you are, you'll never, you'll never actually understand how to fix it." I, I'm not saying we have we have solutions, but we certainly can't just turn around and say John Waters stood up, gave it socks, and we can all get back with our lives now. I, I find it interesting to see where he goes with that now. Mm. Does he? Where does he? Because if you listen to what he said and you believe what he said, he never gave that speech because there was no media there to cover it. <laughs> yeah, 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 this yeah. media which he was a part of for however many years um, is appalling and silencing and won't allow us to talk about this question which we were all covering yesterday and was you know a trending topic and it was on the front of newspapers this morning and it was all over news bulletins whatever this is an ex like it, be, it, uh, it is interesting to see where that ends up where he goes is he going to be you know, a part of this movement going forward? Is he going to be... Like, but what, it, it, we've, got, we've got to sort of decide what is this movement? Yeah. Because it's not so clear what it is. There are elements of of Hibernia Forum in there. There are elements of, of Pro-Life in there. There are elements of MAGA in there. Yeah. There are seven, the, so I did do the count yesterday. Seven MAGA made, made Make America Great Again hats around the place. Like I've just spoke like, to Tony. We, we want hats here for the podcast that are uh, <laughs> M-I-A-L-L-S. Yeah. Miles, yeah. make Ireland a little less shite. That's wow! Well, <laughs> I can get behind that. Don't yeah. sell. Don't sell. Stick a tortoise or a lamb. Yeah. A lamb. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. That's the yeah, Make oh, Ireland a little less shite. Fantastic. How did I miss the lamb sign? Yeah, but, yeah. But we have to be conscious of this. That they are. There are threads of through truth. Um, Brexit-wise, in what they're in what they're saying, yes, we were treated badly by Europe. Yes, we are a small island on the periphery of Europe with full control over anything. Mm. These are all elements, but they're twisting it to this huge migrant yeah. issue. I, I think it, it, you have to be careful about this in a way as well, because from speaking, I did a lot of talking to people in the crowd yesterday, and there was people there who were there out of a curiosity. They weren't even there to say, oh, I'm diehard, I regs, we need to get out. There's people who came up there from around the country, whether it would be like, I was talking to some guys from Nina who were up there, some guys who got on a bus from Cork this morning, or the, of the morning to get up there, and they were like, I'm just interested in this, because I don't think we hear enough about what the European Union actually does. We hear Brexit bad, EU good. Yes. And there's no substance to that. There's no breakdown into, you know, what it means for, you know, corporate tax, because that's that's the next big question on the European level for us. Um, what it means in terms of, like, investment or agriculture or whatever like that. And that's, I think, what we need to come around to. And it's, it's, very, it's very easy to write, every, like, to write it off as this is a big anti-migrant thing. And there were elements of that. There was a huge... That was a huge part of the tone. It was the, the focal point of what John Waters was saying. It did get a lot of people in the crowd completely revved up. But there was a lot of people there as well who were just there out of curiosity or just wanted to, you know, just engage in a little bit of a debate. And we've let ourselves down there because the EU 
last year introduced their white paper on the future of Europe. Across the EU, they 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 said we're going to have thousands of these town hall meetings. We're going to roll them out over eighteen months, mm-hmm. and we're going to allow people to come and have their have their say. And it goes back to what the EU does, what it stands for. A bit of security and borders in there yeah. as well. Economic cooperation, markets. It's all in there. I read the bloody thing. Um, I, I, I'd say I'm probably. I'd say if I was to, if we took a, a straw poll of the politicians who represent us, I don't know many of them who have read it, but but I can tell you I read it and all of it is, comes back down to um, securities in every one of them so PESCO was in every single scenario mm-hmm. in all five scenarios PESCO was just part of it, part of the deal so all of those issues that we have with the EU whether it's those they needed to be discussed and Ireland let itself down because we didn't have our first meeting until November I think of last year in Trinity yeah. if you remember and we had uh, microphones taken from journalists and, That's and we right. had, absolutely yeah. Yeah. so so we haven't we haven't done we haven't had that conversation here so I can understand why people would be but the danger of this as well and this is something you can look back and you can draw parallels with Trump or Brexit or wherever else you want to do if you don't have the debate and you don't have it openly is that you allow misinformation to set in you can let people manipulate and twist facts just make out outright lies yeah and you'll be like PESCO is interesting you Mm -hmm. mentioned that if you look at the, the the meaning of PESCO if you're anti-European or anyway Eurosceptic you're going to say PESCO means European Army yes if you're anybody who is looking at it in terms of what is actually involved in it and setting it out and how you know the European Union works in terms of vetoes in terms of how things progress from here's an idea to what happens on the ground it's a lot less dramatic and sexy than that you know it's a lot more to do with just in terms of investment and just you know shared cooperation and knowledge and whatever else I mean when it comes around to the European Army and whatever like that I mean there will be a much bigger debate about that and I think I think it is worth questioning it and keeping an eye on everything as we go but that isn't happening and that allows people to spread lies well I mean the, the neutrality, neutrality question is, is a huge question and, and the powers that be at the moment are basically fobbing anybody off who, who questions or says, mm. look, we are a neutral country, why are we doing this? And there is no discussion. There simply is no discussion. This is the thing, this is the problem, and it, it is a very valid criticism of our government or Europe that we don't, and it is particularly actually, I mean, without looking at Europe, our governments never do this particularly well in terms of sending out and explaining what it is they're looking for here. So, with regards to PESCO, just clearly explain to people exactly what each facet of this means why we're going to be spending extra on defence out of this, how much extra we're going to be spending on defence, what the safeguards are for our neutrality, what would stop us becoming part of a European army just really clearly, simple explainer we've all come across explainers and, 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 and nobody wants to do this and you, Richard, you sell these things, and I mean the word, you use the word sell you start selling them a year out you don't do it Wait two weeks. Eve of it. Exactly, and that's that's we are so incompetent. But uh, no, but w- w- this is very much like, and I'm just going to make an analogy to the PSC card. They introduce it, do everything. It's almost at the point where it's it becomes the norm, and then somebody raises their hand and go, "Well, did you have any right to do that in the first place?" Yes. And we're in the same position here. Mm-hmm. And until they address the questions as they go along, you're looking for a row at the end. Uh, but, but what happens? What happens is, and I think you both understand this. If you if you have a uh, if you you know the, the old expression, no news, we, no news, uh, or good news we love, bad news we'll deal with, but no news is the worst news because what happens is conspiracy rushes into that yeah. void, and if you have something like PESCO, the PSC card, you can. There's, and it's not even really conspiracy; it's actual, genuine concerns, which is why you have people getting on a on a on a bus from Cork because they have genuine concerns. Doesn't mean they're necessarily a, a, a bigot or a racist or, a, or Islamophobe. Well, you see, you have to have the conversation outside of the bigots and outside of the racists and outside of the Islam. You have to have the the com- They are now setting the perimeters for the conversation. And yet that conversation needs to be had within a different perimeter, mm. in different topics. I think it raised an interesting point, though, when we said earlier about the amount of people who were actually the groups, the groupings um, we had. Because I know you'd respect the people there, and you'd maybe people who who other people have respect for. Maybe we don't. Um, but and then but, you have but, Nigel Farage. Yeah, <laughs> you know, but, but you, so you had, Ni- you had Nigel Farage, right? Let's let's tell the truth here. We can all sit back and, and mock Nigel Farage but Nigel Farage actually did something he destroyed the Tory party when he wasn't even a member of the Tory party he's uh, he, he brought down a, a, in effect a, a government because they had to have a, a, an election yeah. 
he dabbled he went and stood in front of the gold elevator with Trump and he's done all of these things now and he's made himself this kind of um, Quar- contrarian he's a contrarian well contrarian is, is, is even being is even being polite about what Nigel mm. is but, but, but let's tell the truth you can't deny the man has had some serious influence on a global he um, has he has shaped politics in a way that very few others have for generations and this is all despite the fact that he's never won a bloody seat in Parliament perfect it's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's incredible strange, and like it? this is the thing and you'll get this and I was chatting to people before our exit meeting happened and they were like oh why are you doing that and why are you giving Nigel Farage a platform and all that sort of stuff it's like if you can't see that the man actually has huge significance because of like he forced the Brexit referendum they won the Brexit referendum yeah. And he's coming over here doing a public meeting which people are getting behind and whatever else. There's a real significance to this. You mightn't like it, but there's a significance to it and it needs to be reported on. I have to agree with you. Yeah. I have to agree with you. People are saying, no, we should... I agree with, with, you know, cut out the white noise. There's a lot of white noise around this and focus on the bigger figures that are in it. Like, cut out the, the crappy little 20 followers who are going to call you a gobshite and a quizzling or whatever they're going to call you. Cut them out mm. and then concentrate on, on the ones that are actually... There, there is a, a core group of, of people who are selling a message and there's people who want to hear the message. Yeah. There's people who want to hear it. So you have to have... I mean... We said recently that there was plenty of room for the alt right in in Ireland in both Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael. We we think there's plenty of room, plenty of room. They don't have to change too much. And if you really feel you know alt rightish, you wake up and you feel you've renewer. Off you go, take on renewer. But these guys are above that. They're different to it. They're not going to fall into a political grouping. Mm. And there's a lot of there's a lot of people. I mean, I get it all the time. There is a lot of people who are listening. Mark Malone said. Yesterday, somebody said to him, oh, this isn't Ireland. And he goes, oh, yeah, this is very much Ireland. And I have to agree with him. There's an element to that. I, I, I mean, it wasn't all that sort of person who was at the thing yesterday, not by any stretch. But there is that element. That, there is an element to that. And you see it more online these days of these young guys in particular mm-hmm. who are very much of that view and I get an awful lot of abuse from these people all of the time I'm not afraid they have a word for you don't they, 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 uh, anybody, they anybody do. <laughs> somebody invented a word and ever since that person came up with such a word it's stuck it, it, just, it, has it, stuck it, it gets around a little bit yeah. that word would be guinea bot yeah. and the person who came up with that word would be me uh, that was today's lesson yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. a Martin exit yeah. <laughs> um, uh, no but like it, you're very but you're, you're spot on because there is there is that element it's the last Lads that, that that pile in, um, I, I get I get continuously disappointed in when I, when I, I I say something and then I see the 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 trolls that roll in and in their in their bio says ethno nationalist or you know covered in all of these. Well, well let's oh, go there. They were there. There was I mean if you're going I think you're talking about the National Party. Yes, really, absolutely. It? Yeah. There was, there was a very high ranking member of the National Party. Don't like high ranking. He has two hundred followers on Twitter. Yeah, on, He's uh, so yeah. high ranking. Massive, it doesn't matter massive online. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there were, they. I mean, there was members of the National Party there chatting to some people there. There was people who did have that sort of ethno nationality thing, and you feel they were all supporting it online and whatnot. But they're all very much of the idea of the Gale and stuff like that. Yeah. And that was a very small minority of the people who were there. But that is a, a growing thing. And I get the, actually. It was. I think it was when I was covering the alt-right in general. I did a thing on the Pack Any show about a year and a half ago about the idea of the alt-right, just to explain it to people, because people didn't really know what it was at yeah, the time. Yeah. And I went into the whole thing, and the amount of trolling and abuse, I didn't understand that it was actually something that was here. Yeah. And I had all these, the people with these Bridget's crosses as their, like, emblem yeah, of this. Yeah, it's all new like religion and, and everything's I was, just, I was just blown away. I was like, holy God, this is new. Because it was actually a point where I just changed my opinion a little bit on Twitter, which is getting off track. But, like, people there send me photoshops of me in a gas chamber and all yeah. this sort of stuff. Yeah. And, like, I've never been afraid to get into a discussion and let people, like, people on any side will hate the media and I've had this again today but I'm never afraid to engage with people even if they're putting them out and are having a proper go at me or they're sending me threats or whatever I'll always try and discuss the issue with them and try and get around and explain where I'm coming from And but these guys a lot of these people just don't want to listen oh, I had a guy last night and he, his first his first tweet was you're a gobshite it's a good start and I'm like okay well, what have you got of substance to yeah. say <laughs> I don't have anything of substance to say so well, then why are you coming at me because you're a gobshite and I'm like 
Is that the best you can do? Yeah, but mm. like, it's it's all well and good to I, like. I, I just, just try not to answer these people. Yeah. But when it comes to the other stuff, the actual more sinister part, where you have people and they will have shared views. You know, they will they will say they're of. You know, they're they're for you know tackle the housing crisis, tackle this. But but then they'll say that the cause is is yes, is something yes, else. this is what I'm saying. And here's and like so. You have the National Party there. You had Farage, and he brings his supporters. You have people who are genuinely concerned with the EU. You had Cormac Lucy, who's a uh, he's a respected, um, he's an academic, and he's, he knows he knows what he's talking about. Cormac, like this is he represents the Hibernia Forum. He's he, he has a good platform. You know he can mm. he can he's he's on national radio waves and TV and summer schools and yeah. whatever and that, else there is. But I've not like that's fine. That's absolutely fine. That's all good. But but I have a problem with him saying that that uh, we were quizlings. This is yeah. This is the, this was the the thing that stood out in, in Cormac's speech. I mean. His the, the whole sort of tenor of his speech was that you know we're giving away our identity and independence, signing it away to be decided by people in Brussels. And he got to this point in the speech where he's talking about um, he described people basically were pushing for a more integrated EU. Is basically he just after talking about like EU wide tax rates, mm. and he said that there are these people who want to see us governed from abroad, basically by Brussels. He described them as a quizzling faction. And I, it, my ears pricked up hearing that because I didn't think we'd reached a point in like public discussion in this country where we throw out the word quizzling. For people who, who don't know, I mean, quizzling comes from Vikon Quizzling, who was basically uh, the Norwegian military officer who was in charge of the Nazi occupation government in Norway, mm-hmm. uh, who sent people to death camps and is basically a byword now for a collaborator and Nazi right, collaborator yeah. for it's, a foreign it, invading it's, force. You might as well call it a capo in a, in a it, you know. Like yeah. that's and it is, it's, it's, it's a word that has ended political careers mm. in, in, in the UK and elsewhere in Europe because it is such an emotive term. It is something that I think people shouldn't use lightly or at all. It is like calling people a Nazi away and, and people do get very offended and upset by it. If you talked, if you said to anybody in Norway that people were on at a big meeting in Ireland there and use the word quizzling to describe people of a differing a political opinion. Well, actually, it wasn't there a law passed in Poland this week? Yeah, well, hang on, that's that was a completely. Uh, but again, it was about, thing. It, but it was about you know you're talking about language again and about control of language and control of what people can say. Mm. Whereas quizzling, quizzling is very clearly we know what quizzling means. Well, the connotation is very clear. Well, very. And, and and the concern I have, and this is the concern I have, is that they decided that. The rock we want to perish on is the CCCCCCCCTB, the the common consolidated um, tax base that just corporate tax base. Okay? Yeah, yeah. So that's the rock we're going to perish on. Um, Brian Hayes has written a blog about it, saying he's not um, he's not going to. This is the this is this is the EU going too far. Cormac Lucy is speaking out about it. When the UK leave and the UK will leave I, I fully believe the UK will go through with it mm. the people who keep telling me there's going to be a second referendum I, I hate to burst your bubble guys but they're not like the Irish that we, we just don't we won't keep voting until we get the answer we want um, the CCCTB is going to become a, going to become a problematic for Ireland insofar as we've lost our buffer I happen to think that uh, that, uh, and I'm going to I'm going to go into a bit more detail on this later on in the week about how I think it's going to actually play out. But I can see the likes of Cormac Lucy and their opinions actually getting a, more, a bit more gravitas because people at certain levels in in our multinational corporation uh, driven economy, that's a big concern. Yeah, well, even it. If you take it that it is a huge concern for for Brian Hayes, for Fianna Gael, for, even for Fianna Fáil, it's a huge concern. Mm. But to discuss it while you're wearing the coat of anti-immigration is a dangerous thing to do. Yeah, I think in fairness, he steered off mostly from immigration in his speech. Yeah, but you're a he, part he of a did, forum that's talking yeah, about that's this. That's true. That is true, and that is a fair point. I mean, I did put it to Cormac there um, earlier on today. I was I was trying. He was sort of back and forthing about what exactly he meant or who exactly he was describing when he was talking about Quizlings and he never really got back as to whether he thought it was an appropriate thing to say or whether he would apologise or whatever um, yeah but it is something people have clearly taken offence to and I, I think the historical context of it is very very clear 
And it, I don't know. I don't know where this goes then. Did, you, mean, find, this did you find the room imposing? Did you did you find it imposing on a personal level? Did you, you I presume you had no fears of being there? But no, you, I, I have a lot of. I mean, there's a lot of people there. Who are, Richard, for you don't know, was built six foot two. <laughs> no, I, I, think, I, I, I don't want to get to it into a thing where I, I, I'm describing, you know. I'm but you did have. So you did have. I saw one hostile tweet where you. Yeah, were, you uh, were that so, was yeah, that was yeah, actually yeah. one of my favorite things, which has happened, and I, it was a uniquely Irish thing. Thing. And I, I actually enjoyed, and I had a great chat with a lot of people who were in the crowd, and they had some really interesting views. But there was one point in the entire discussion where there was a Q and A session from the floor, and one young woman who was probably in her mid twenties, I, I, I think, um, she asked, stood up and she asked, "Here, how is there so few women in here?" Because um, that's something the media is going to talk about, and if we're trying to build a platform and, a, and something that catches on, we need a broader appeal. She got instantly heckled by a few people, uh, <laughs> which I was like, which I, I was surprised by. And then a guy at the front of the room, uh, he was just a member of the audience. He stood around and he told all of the women in the room to stand up because that would be a good thing to do oh, God. and that would show that oh, you know, we have notes up. but it was it just um, I couldn't count I mean I have a photo on oh, no, no, oh, it was, it was um, and all, of the, all of the women who were in attendance then stood up so there was a, there was a, a fairly decent mix of men and women no. I mean I, in total and I mean this is something I couldn't really get, give you about 400 in the crowd the majority I would say and like uh, to, to, be, to be fair about it at least 80% men and it was possibly like, it, it was it was like going to a live off the ball event. Let's tell the truth. Like that's what it was like. It, uh, it was welcome to the man shed. Uh, I saw the picture, and I, I can say it. You can't, but that's how. Um, yeah, but the thing about it was, it was it was a, like it was a very interesting optical moment where you have yeah. a guy telling all of the women in the room to stand up so that we can see. Yes, there are women here, and I was standing over at the side of the room, and I was tweeting all of the coverage of it. And a guy just turns to me and says, "Put that up, you prick!" Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and he was like. Well, I absolutely am because this is a very interesting thing which has just happened. And I just love that. And I you quoted him. him. And I, you did. Quoted I did. Him. I did. And he actually, do you know what? That guy actually came up at the end of it. He's like, "Yeah, how are you?" Yeah, like, yeah, Grand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks for all of that. Yeah. But yeah. no, I think I, I don't want to be seen or, or be thought of as being like hostile to this. You know, the, the, to, to people who are there. I mean, there's some people there with whose views I don't think any of us in a right-minded society would agree with. That stuff about, you know, ethno-nationalism, and there were some people there who prescribed that. But there are some people there, again, who just have concerns. They feel like they've been fucked over. Yeah, Basically yeah, by, yeah. you know, they would say it's an, a neoliberal society well, it's, and whatever. It's, it's, that. And I have people in, in the UK, I know a lot of I have, I have friends who are very Brexit-supporting, and I have friends who are very much of the opposite side of it as well. Mm-hmm. But, like... There's, yeah, when when was, you shouldn't be that hostile in a there, room. There was a you know? brilliant, there was a brilliant uh, experience I had a couple of months ago um, driving in the UK, and I was listening to BBC, and um, they were they had this news bulletin. Was it was an actual 15, 20 minute genuine parsing it out about how everybody at uh, post Brexit was now five pounds worse off per week. Was mm. this? And then they went, oh, and then it came through that the pensioners with the, the new budget change that they were nearly down seven pounds and. Uh, and then the third part was that um, single parents were struggling and this there was a problem and if you remember there was an outrage yeah. after the budget in, in the UK about single parents falling into poverty at a yes. faster rate same as here the next few minutes afterwards there was an actual phone in show and the first three people rang in and they all came in on the same premise saying I am one of those pensioners and I'm down five pounds and then they were asked the second question was and would you and would you vote to go no we we're, we're taking back our country <laughs> five pounds is enough for the, and I just thought oh Jesus it was like it was like going through the twilight zone and uh. and that's very much where you have people there and they think you know that's the sacrifice that people are going to going to endure well when when Trump won I remember tweeting this out you know the best thing that happened was that Clinton didn't win. The worst thing that happened was that Trump did win. Mm. And I think when you when you ignore that there was a whole load of people alienated, uh, Clinton alienated a whole load of people, and that, that very cosy neoliberal relationship with the finance... People don't like it. No. And it left the room for them to move to Trump, and I think that's where we are here now. There is a, a, a very cosy consensus that anything you say against the EU, you're you're being off with the fairies. And that's the problem. I think. I think. I mean, 
I don't like when the media talks about the media, and yet we always do it, and I'm about to again. <laughs> I mean, there, there, there is a, a, an issue, and it is one of the main criticisms, and I got it all day today. And you know what? There's, there's, a, there's a bit of truth in, in what, what these people are saying. These are people who would have been at the meeting yesterday, and they're having a go at the media for being slanted on these things or enjoying a consensus. I mean, there is a degree of truth in the fact that maybe the media doesn't do as good of a job as it should do in, you know, explaining ideas to people or explaining or giving a fair hearing to things because people a lot of people in the media it's probably just down to a lack of diversity in our media mm. is that you know we're yes. a lot of them are from the same backgrounds yes. a lot of them are from the same <laughs> university and I think I think you know more people in the media shouldn't be afraid to say this that, you know we do need a more diverse media people coming from different whether it's socio-economic backgrounds or different like ethnicities or different upbringings and I don't think we have enough of that and there is a bit of like you know well you've been through the ringer you've, you've come You've done your apprenticeship. You've done your time, mm. so you know there are there are fallow periods in there when you're doing your time. And if you can't survive the fallow periods, how do you become a journalist? Mm. And you need fallow to be able to survive the fallow periods. Absolutely. You need to. But I think the point I was coming around to make is that, like, you know, not everybody in this country is happy with the media and probably won't like won't trust anything that we say. But we need to do the job regardless and try and you know. Just try, it, just try and give an even an even hearing to things without without becoming a sneering thing. That was something that was accused of earlier on was that I went to this thing to, and in reporting all of the colour and everything that happened in the thing, it was a sneering exercise. But you're in here is, with us and you you agree that this is a conversation that needs to be had absolutely on different absolutely. terms. And I think that is that's that's the way I'd cover any political and, and, and conference I think as well. And you I have think, to have the laughs as well. As and 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 it's it's rough it's, and tumble. I think it's important that we also say that, I, that without being too kind to the media there's also um, a, a, an actual structure so some people are broadcasting so you're on the radio mm. you have five minutes you have uh, news traffic weather you have you know you. so people and then you've got they say to people like oh you know should they only they, they, they think in 140 characters or whatever the, the, the phraseology is we need to make sure that we have this so there's also an element of this is how the this is how the product is delivered as well that's not necessarily always people actually can they, well, can eat it that way and then you go into RTE and you maybe have a panel show and the panel show maybe actually built in such a way as that this is going to be you know we'll we'll have a, a, a mock debate over here and we'll have an actual agreed talking point over here and then we'll see where it goes now I'm not saying that this is 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 across the board but it certainly comes to me where sometimes it's like watching a college um, a bad college debate yeah yeah no, I and, get you. and if you're going to watch a bad college debate I'd rather watch it in, with, with, with people who have some ideas that, that are going to actually do well, you, you caught me on a good day Richard normally, oh, I'd, be, normally yeah. I'd be very against it's a very good day yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. it's only taken me 19 years of fighting with it to get it into the newspapers yeah. you know so today I say yeah the media works yeah but it took a very, very, very long time to get it to that point. Mm. A hugely long time to get it to that point. So, yeah, media needs to diversify for... I mean, there was a time when the only voices you ever heard in media were plummy Dublin 4 accents, and we've gotten away from that. Yeah. I mean, there's actually Kerry people, like Mick Clifford. <laughs> <laughs> you're not from Cork uh, Kerry uh, uh, I think you're, uh, you're in for trouble now guys but I mean this is it I mean it's, it's, it's the same thing and again you go back to Brexit and Trump and there was an element of surprise in the media at those results mm. and I mean, if we're, we're not careful, the same thing will happen here because we don't engage... Well, we don't want to end up with another debate. piñata that never gets used. Oh, you yeah. know, we don't want to end up in that case. Do you, do you ever listen to the lads on um, Pod Save America? I do a little bit. Yeah, do you remember? I find it a little bit much. I'm like, yeah, yeah. come on. It, it is, it is completely, yeah. it is completely. Like, I mean, we even tried, we, but, but when I listen to them and I think, like, they sat and they did a thing with Bill Simmons, if you remember before. And, right. And, and, and they were, and all of this was going, they were literally talking about the Hillary Victory Parade. Mm. Yeah. And and, it, and and I was so convinced because I was listening to them going, oh sure, it's a victory parade. They 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 got the the lobby of the hotel. They put in the glass ceiling. Yeah, yeah, of course. The yeah. glass ceiling. They're going to break the glass ceiling that day, and they were all invited. But there's a b- bigger question of polarization. What's going on with politics at the moment is quite. And and they they talk about a rush to the centre. Yeah, I, I definitely think that we need to have this discussion. If we don't have this discussion about Brexit, about the future of the EU, the direction of the EU, if everybody goes with the cosy consensus, you are leaving a vacuum. 
and into that vacuum will come the the and excuse me for want of a better word this is my opinion crazy voices and the crazy voices go in there and they become the force for change and then you end up with Trump America you end up with Irish people wearing make America great again hats and you wonder how did it all go wrong yeah. well it all went wrong because you didn't have the conversation in the first place you can't be you can't be so liberal I, I can't be I always say it to you Martin I? I'm so liberal that I don't even need to discuss my liberal values oh yeah absolutely yeah. <laughs> yeah. you have to have the realm you have to have the debate guys you know I think yeah I think I mean there's so much that needs to be teased out with the European Union because I mean I can fully understand you know why people turned out yesterday for our exit and they hate the European Union because I mean and this is the problem I think I think when you come around to what actually happens next the discussion needs to be about the push from places like France and Germany for a United States of Europe you have yeah, people like Martin Schultz Europe. will come out Jean-Claude Juncker has made it very very obvious as well that that's something that he's very interested in mm. and that needs to be a discussion as well it's like how exactly does Ireland fit in because I don't think that's something that anybody in Ireland at the moment would be particularly fond of as an idea mm. how exactly we go about breaking back against that and nobody's having this discussion about what the EU even is well you see we've, we've come through this this period where it has been us licking the EU to get the money I mean that's really what happened well there was two things we look at the motorways and we were grew, we grew up with the motorways with the, with the EU flag on every mm. on every exit and entry and you knew they, they, they paid for the roads then we went through the correction where they came in and they, they bailed us out um, that's a much wider argument than just saying they bailed us out but on the flip side we don't want to leave the EU but we certainly don't understand we don't want to, to have the um, uh, the federal Europe I, I've been to the DM25 meetings with, with I've sat beside in front of Yanis Varoufakis who spoke about um, a more uh, cooperative Europe and a better Europe but he's trying to drive it from a bottom up movement the fear is what, what's actually happening is it's top down and the top down isn't going to be sellable to the, to the populace because people will actually see through it I, 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 I always remember I think it was was it October where Leo sent his lads over to the Tories to talk to them about some people from the stra- strategic communication oh, yeah, mm-hmm. went over and he got a little memo and I think it was Ken Fox put it up because Ken FOI's everything <laughs> and, uh, and it was and the first couple of paragraphs were like don't lie um, put, the, put your views in the most saleable way don't lie and it was more or less so, so and it's the same thing when people don't get this stuff from the EU when, it, when we hear of you know um, John, Cla- John Claude Juncker we'll hear um, the, we hear these names and we go oh uh, I won't be t- I won't be dictated to and the oh, general yeah. populace won't follow yeah I think and I mean with that void of discussion about it I mean that's going to happen I mean that that is what's happening now but mm. if it concurrently is you wonder given the meeting that we had this weekend where exactly does that movement go now and I mean I've spoken to Herman Kelly who is the guy who organised it really interesting guy actually mm. I mean a lot, not, a lot of people won't really know him and his background former editor of the Irish Catholic um, he was involved in, in some EU re- referendums over here he then became press officer that's right for um, Nigel Farage in Europe he's a dairy nationalist he's he speaks Irish mad into Scaled Games wanted to see United Ireland all that sort of crack and yet he was like basically the press guy for Nigel Farage and I think people find that an interesting dynamic but what his plan now is that this is the first of a number of meetings he's very happy with how things went and rightly so I mean I think from from the perspective of that movement and the Irexit thing that meeting on Saturday was a huge success I mean in terms of the messages that they wanted to get out in terms of the fact so that you're talking a more local movement now that they're going to well the, 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 the idea and the big picture idea and it's something that Farage was talking about it's something everybody was there was talking about is that they want a political party yeah you're talking about running candidates they want to run candidates well then you're talking grassroots so you and, know yeah, yeah. And, and you have I mean James Charity a Galway councillor was the only elected official who was actually there yesterday and he had basically working out here's our, all of our constituencies and here's we need to talk about how exactly we're going to build this because it is a broad broad church and it's hard to see it slotting but there's but there's but, together but it is that broad but you can say well it's but 
Yeah. There are a few there, unifying there was, sorry, things there was, in there was it. A, yeah, exactly. There's unifying things in it. And if you can say that that's... It's like anything else, any other political party, you find the one that's most... Like, we had Gary Gannon in here and we mocked him awfully for, you know, his... Uh, he'd, he'd, he'd interned with Sinn Féin. He'd um, flirted with... Yeah. 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 And we said, so, you know... And we announced him when he was moving to... to <laughs> fit, and, yeah, and, yeah, and, you know, but, that, but, but, but we... So, so we had that. But, but it's, it's, it is about finding that. And in and in that, there's something to be said. Because if... if Cormac Lucy is there. Well, then we know that the, that the dentist from from Clontarf Tarf is there, is, yeah. Um, and we know that uh, if that's the case, well, look, you know, um, the other councillor from uh, South County Dublin who who was thrown out yeah. of uh, Fine Gael. Well, we, I, you, you know, know, you could you could theoretically have a Hibernian Forum party. No. Well, I think what Herman was saying, I was talking to him afterwards, he's actually very affable and a nice guy and he was happy with the fact that, you know, the media was there obviously to cover it. But if he was talking about how, you know, you actually go from this meeting where you have 400 and odd people at it and you have these broad opinions and just like, just a smorgasbord of different yeah. ideas and how you actually build it up. He's talking about it goes first to think tank political movement political yeah, totally. So he that's that's the way that's the way he sees it yeah. progressing. And I mean I'm gonna change the name of this to the Echo Chamber Institute. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Might get some grant money out of it. The Echo Chamber Chamber forum. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. That's what it is. It's but no you have to you have to have um four letters. It only works with four letters. Oh yeah? Right wing organizations in Ireland have four letters. I O N A I B E C I'm very Follow it through, yeah. and you will find it's four letters. It's always four letters. Oh, you, you, this is the. Uh, uh, and, and I know my old tin fat is him, tin tin hat is officially fucking gone. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> okay, so I don't care what you say. My tin hat is well, gone. Look, uh, <laughs> um, you gonna watch Super Bowl later? I am indeed. Yeah, I, I'll stay up for a bit of it. I'm, I've, I've an early start now tomorrow. I'm on the breakfast program on Monday just to talk about all this. I regs a crack. All right, and, and it's, uh, it's the Super Bowl late tonight. Like I don't know who's in it tonight. Be. It'll be until 4 a.m. And it and it goes on for about six hours. Yeah. And 4 a.m. It's starting now. No, it, it'll go on. It'll go on till 4 a.m. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. So the sun will be coming up, and you'll only, you'll actually just come in alive, Martin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Martin's a vampire. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, if I know your listeners, I mean, they'll be. This is how they should decide who to to, to back in this one. The Philadelphia Eagles, good working class, blue collar team. You yeah. know, a lot, a lot of like, social there. values is very good. And yeah, they're all out appealing. They're all actually very a lot of social activists on the team. And yet, Donald Trump is great friends with Tom Brady, and the owner of the New England Robert Patriots. Kraft, yeah. yeah, yeah. So no, no, it's right. And here's, so, yeah. I got all you lefties out there know who to support now. He's, he's he's outing me now because he knows I'm, I'm supporting. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm supporting the Trump. I just I just want people to know that that Tony Groves supports Donald Trump. That's, yeah. that's, that's I've, already, I've, 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 I've taken many twists and turns to get to that way, but that's exactly for our listeners that will be surprised from for me that <laughs> I know I knew it all along. Know. I knew it all along. I temper him. <laughs> <laughs> Without me, that well, guy would have been in at the IRX and been wearing his mag. I say, I was having some familiar about him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just, just, I, it won't take it won't take much to turn me. I can tell you that much. <laughs> no, Richard, listen, mate, really appreciate you coming in. It's, and you're, you're getting a few days holders. I am I'm away next week. Yeah, so and um, we're nice. Or are you not allowed to say? I'm not allowed to say. I'm okay. not going to okay. tell, okay. tell the great. Okay. Will there be a bit of sunshine? That's the big thing. <sighs> I, I hope so, but probably not. Well, yeah. crossed, I, have, I have awful bad luck. You know. <laughs> Fingers crossed because it's awful here this coming week. Fingers crossed you have a nice holiday and thank you very much for coming in. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, yeah thanks for listening, folks. And um, listen, we will be back during the week. We, we, this was a bit of a pop up uh, pop up podcast. We really appreciate you coming in and uh, keep listening. Tell your friends, tell everybody. Thank you.